All right. And uh, with that, it is now uh, a quarter after the hour here. And uh, all of our known speakers are, uh, are present. Uh, in case you've just joined, uh, again, an announcement that there are still a couple of open lightning talk slides. So, I mean, slots. So if anyone wants to uh, give an impromptu talk in a few minutes, uh, feel free to sign up in the conference planning document, which I pasted in the chat. Uh, otherwise, you'll just have to listen to me for longer. So, you know, threat or incentive, I don't know. Um, but with that, I, I will welcome our uh, first speaker for the final day of WolfCon slash Viewfind Summit, uh, David Mouse, who will be talking to us about analyzing, understanding, and hopefully fixing degraded search performance. Thank you. Um... Oh, wait, it doesn't work. Now it works. Uh, some short uh, words about me. Uh, I'm David Maus. Uh, I work at the State and University Library uh, of Hamburg. Uh, I'm the head of the Research and Development Department. And if you ask, um, what, do, what does this department do? Uh, we do discovery systems. Um, we have not one, not two, but three viewfind-based systems. Uh, we do repositories uh, for documents and research data, and we support uh, digital humanities projects at the Hamburg University. I'm a viewfind contrib contributor uh, from version two, I think it was, the big jump from one to two. And if I'm not working, um, with a viewfind, I uh, enjoy working with markup technologies, uh, XML, all the way, um, every way. And you might notice the picture on the right. Um, if I'm not sitting in front of a computer, I'm out and about. You can put me in a kayak and I will happily paddle uh, wherever my nose leads me. Up. Oh. What I uh, are, what I I am going to do. Uh, I want to talk about um, a problem we faced with our main uh, discovery system. It's called Catalog Plus. Um, I will give you a short introduction to Catalog Plus, what it is, uh, the infrastructure, the setup. Uh, I will then talk about uh, Solar Probe, a module we uh, developed um, for Viewfind that tracks uh, performance indicators. And uh, I will show some nice graphics and charts about our findings. And at the end, I will try a short summary. Um, yeah. Uh, Demian, if I if I overrun the time, please raise your hand. Um, sometimes I... Uh, we'll do, but we have a little flexibility, so it should yeah. be okay. <laughs> so... Uh, what is Catalog Plus um, uh, in a nutshell? It's uh, the primary discovery platform for Hamburg University. And it has, uh, it's not just a viewfind, it also integrates uh, pattern facing services like uh, document delivery or a semester apparatus. Um, on the technical side, it's a viewfind at one with uh, some local modifications and a couple of uh, local modules uh, for specialized functions. Talking numbers, uh, you can search in about 8 million media units. Uh, this means books and other units and about 100 million uh, articles. We have uh, 250,000 searches per month and about 200,000 item investigations per month. This means detailed views. Speaking in terms of people, uh, at the library, there are roughly 10 to 15 people involved in uh, our discovery services. Catalog Plus is the big one. Um, these 10 to 15 people come from different professions, librarians, developers, system administrators, 
and uh, are in different roles. Uh, we have a weekly, yeah, a monthly meetup uh, where we discuss all things uh, discovery. If you look at the infrastructure, really, really quick, um, we access our library system at the search index uh, through a service provider. So we don't index the data by ourselves. Uh, we use uh, the Katzen Plus Central search index by the Verbundzentrale of the Common Library Network. Uh, it's a huge, uh, a huge service, a search service that's used by many libraries um, in Germany. And uh, the use of this search index uh, is regulated by a fair use policy. And this is the Stichwort, as we would say in German. Um, so if you take this into account, then uh, last year we faced uh, a problem. Uh, last year in the summer, our search index provider clarified uh, the fair use policy uh, and clarification meant um, the service provider limited um, the search index access to 175 requests per minute per discovery system. And if you exceeded this limit, uh, you were, uh, you are throttled or uh, in the worst case, you get a hard error that says uh, too many requests. And that's okay. That's one way to, to make a policy. Um, the thing was that uh, this happened on a really short notice. Um, so all of a sudden, uh, we had to uh, think about our index usage. Uh, before this policy changed, we didn't think about it much. And this was the moment when I uh, came up with a lot of questions. Uh, for example, um, to which degree are we affected by this policy change? We knew that we were affected because the users reported errors, but we didn't know to which degree. Um, we didn't know how many requests uh, do we send per uh, minute or per hour. And we didn't know which components of you find are sending these requests. How fast is the index? Uh, who's to blame? What is the reason? Uh, why do we exceed uh, the limit by the service provider? Um, summer 22, we hadn't, we couldn't find an answer to this question because there was no way for us to tell how we actually use the index. And this is where we uh, came up with uh, the so-called solar probe. Uh, it's a probe that you insert uh, between viewfind and solar um, as a reminder uh, if you, you you might know it now you know it um, a viewfind uses an event an event bus uh, to resolve the search backend and to allow for the manipulation of search requests and search responses. There are four events. It's the resolve event um, that's uh, used to find which backend instance to use. Uh, then there's a pre and post event that's triggered before and after the search. And there's an error event in case uh, there was an error uh, during the search request. Um, there's a yeah, a simple schematic on how it works. Um, uh, on the right side is the graphic. On the left side, uh, it's what the solar probe listener does. Um, we attach to an event to the event bus, uh, and we wait for the pre-post and error event. If the pre-event uh, arrives, we store the search command. Um, and an SPL object storage um, and uh, um, track the, uh, the time when the search command, when the pre-event 
uh, was uh, received. And if we receive the post uh, or the error event, we take the time of the post and error event, remove the command from the storage and write a log file um, with um, the information we gathered. Uh, so this means that we we the probe tracks every request that goes from viewfind uh, to the search index. Uh, we do record some inform a couple of information. These are the important things. Uh, we track the response time. How long did it take from viewfind to index and back? Um, we track the, com the search command. Was it a search or was it a detail view or what was it? Uh, we track the backend identifier. Um, if possible, we track the self-reported query time. Uh, what did Solar say? How long did the query processing take? And of course, we record the response status. Was it an error? Um, was it okay? And uh, we try to track the user interaction. And user interaction roughly means the URL that was called by a user that triggered something inside viewfind that ended up uh, causing a request. If we try to envision it, uh, we are sitting between very, very low in viewfind, below you find and the index, uh, and this means we have a not a clear vision about what what really happened uh, up there. If you find we only see uh, the interaction with Solar. That's other topic. Uh, the log file is a is a simple text file uh, with a timestamp uh, and JSON encoded data. Um, we do some analysis. Uh, it's a hodgepodge of ad hoc scripts and programs. As always, uh, we uh, utilize Excel and CSV ta tables. Um, in the beginning, we used new plots, and we are currently looking into RRD tool uh, to store this information in a, a round robin database. Um, things that we are interested in uh, um, are the active sessions. Uh, so a session is roughly uh, an indicator for a, a distinct user. Um, of course, we count the search commands we issue uh, per hour and per minute. Uh, we try to track the user interactions and uh, we have an eye on the response time uh, of the index. Um, Yeah, I still have some time. This is good. Um, so what did we find out? Um, everybody loves charts. Uh, this is a, uh, a chart, uh, the number of commands of search requests, you could say, uh, per minute uh, on the 8th of February. Uh, on the left, way on the left is uh, uh, midnight. Uh, and on the right is also midnight, so it's it's the whole day, and you see that we uh, we exceed the limit. That's uh, the red line, uh, especially uh, in the midst of the day. So it's starting at ten o'clock our time. The usage goes up, and we start to hit the uh, one hundred seventy-five um, requests per minute limit. Um, if you look at uh, the average request time. Of in on this day, then you see this. See this. Um, starting in the middle of the day, we do have uh, um, quite heavy spikes uh, in the, res the response time from the search index, and this translates to a slow discovery system on the user user side. And if you see, there's uh, things like. 100, nee, 18,000 milliseconds. Um, this meant that in some cases users waited for an eternity uh, to retrieve a, um, a record or to perform a search. 
This is not good. Um, we ask ourselves uh, who's to blame, what's happening. Uh, we had three hypotheses. Number one is uh, it's the bots and crawlers. Um, number two is uh, it's uh, features of you find that cause uh, that many commands and hypothesis three is uh, it's uh, let's say suboptimal programming on our side or on viewfront side or a combination of all the three. So start with the bots. Um, this is a chart uh, sessions per hour uh, January till uh, midst of March. And I didn't, well, there's this red uh, circle and it's, uh, this is, uh, it marks the time when we uh, excluded all robots, robots uh, with uh, robots.txt. Before this change, we were very permissive. Then we said we, everyone is uh, excluded and we see a sharp drop uh, in uh, the sessions uh, per hour. And this means distinct roughly means distinct users. Um, and this meant, uh, yeah, no, distinct users. So footnote, uh, uh, the drop was really significant. It's in the course of an hour, it went from 2000 to uh, just 100 uh, sessions uh, per hour. It's uh, amazing. I didn't expect this. Uh, if you look at the search commands per hour, in the same period, um, we do see something changed. Um, there's uh, less, uh, uh, there's not the, well, the robots cost kind of a baseline of the commands, um, but we still have uh, all the all the spikes. Um, so bots were a problem, but not the only one. So it's uh, uh, the next thing we looked at is uh, user interactions. Um, from January to March, we uh, collected the information and then we um, calculated the percentage. Well, we mapped the user interaction to, uh, yeah. we mapped the information to user interactions um, and uh, listed uh, the top uh, number of or the, the top percentages of index requests. Number one is an obvious one. It's the result list. Of course, it's uh, a fifth of our uh, index interactions. Um, the next three are the interesting ones. Um, number two is uh, the article avail availability, availability of articles. It's one fifth. Um, of our index use in this time period. Um, you may notice that there's no result list uh, or detail view article. So, um, yeah, that's another story. So that's the articles. Um, the next two uh, uh, interactions that we looked, uh, took a closer look at were um, the number of searches in the in the other tab. So you have the two tab search, um, just displaying the number, and the other tab was sixteen percent. And uh, we had a location facet that, for historical reasons, was loaded via uh, AJAX. Um, oh, I tried to speed up. Um, what did we do? Um, first, we took a look at the uh, article availability. Uh, this was one of the more complicated parts that we didn't want to touch, so we ignored it. Um, what you then did is we uh, disabled the number of hits in the other tab, and we refactored uh, our installation to not use uh, AJAX in AJAX requests for the location information, but to make it part of the normal search request. And 
we wrote this out. Well, we published this modifications in May. This is where the red circle is to now. And you see that there's a, a, there's a clear change in the pattern of commands per hour. They go down. And that's really good. Um, that's really good. Uh, now there's an addendum. Uh, we also enabled the search cache. Um, you, well, you find supports uh, caching of search requests. Uh, we enabled it uh, for Catalog Plus, and uh, currently we cache about 20% of our requests to the index. This is a footnote in the presentation. Um, the thing is, uh, we can't we can't tell which requests we the, we can't tell the requests we um, capture with Solar Probe which of them are cached. Uh, we can say that if it's less than 10 milliseconds, then it's most likely cached, but there's no hard uh, indicator um, to know this. After all these changes, um, we take another look at the average request time over a day. It's another Wednesday in August, and it looks uh, fabulous. There are still some spikes, um, but in general, the request time is uh, less than 500 milliseconds. And this is uh, good. It's really good. Uh, I like it. Uh, another perspective on this uh, topic is um, uh, the question how many, well, how many commands, search commands were um, executed in less than uh, one second. Um, the red circle is the May update, and you see that it uh, it also got uh, got better. Uh, most of the commands are executed in less than one second, and that's it's a real beauty. <sighs> what did we learn? Um, or what did we do? Uh, we started to collect performance oriented data in uh, July twenty two. Uh, and this turned out to be a, a really, well, really important because now we can measure impact, the impact of our improvements. Um, another footnote that the hardest part is, uh, is uh, figuring out what you want to measure and what you want to analyze and how to interpret, interpret the data. But we have a time series uh, starting uh, a year ago. Mm. We used a combination of excluding bots and crawlers and caching and refactoring and improve the overall performance. And this is something for later maybe we found that there's uh, room for improvement uh, in, the viewfind, in the viewfind core application when it comes with uh, to caching records. Uh, we do have some. Ex we did make some experiments of a more aggressive approach, let's say, uh, of, of caching single records, um, and this is something that we would like to uh, explore maybe next year, maybe for another viewfind version. If you want to play with Solar Probe, uh, it's uh, GPL three licensed, uh, it's Composer installable. You find it on GitHub. And of course you can write me a mail and talk to me. Uh, and I also, how do you say it? I put my Fidiverse Mastodon address there if you want to follow me uh, in the Fidiverse. And I'm done, I think. Thank you very much.